everybody. Good afternoon. It is Christmas Eve, December the 24th, 2022, 415 in the afternoon, and we're here in Jeremiah chapter number five. We've been busy about the holiday uh activities today. And so here we're a bit late coming in. I imagine you also have been doing the same. So you probably won't catch this for a while. Maybe not even until the first of the week. I don't know. Although someone just joined us. Welcome. Glad you're here. Jeremiah chapter number five. We've got 31 verses here and I'm going to just be frank and honest with you. At this point, Jeremiah is pointing out the sins of the people. He's revealing to Judah primarily, although the entire Entire nation of Israel, their sin against God. And so there's not a lot to pull out of here. It is very poetic and beautiful the way that he frames everything. But uh, for the most part, I don't have a lot to give you. It's pretty self explanatory. I will when I can, but otherwise, we're just going to proceed and read down through the verses. So let's pray together and we will handle Jeremiah 5. Father, we love you. Thank you for this holiday that we celebrate of the birth of your only begotten son. We thank you for Jesus. Were it not for him, there'd be no point to us having these times together every day, but we have life through him, the free gift from you. Thank you for it. We ask your blessing on the reading and study today. Give us wisdom, please. It's in Christ's name we ask. Amen. All right, Jeremiah 5, if you have a Bible, you're able to turn there and read along with me, please feel free to do so. Jeremiah 5, verses, uh, verse number 1, Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon it. So God is saying, hey, Hurry up, don't waste, don't delay, don't uh, waste time. Get out there, run, and find a man that executes judgment and seeks the truth. If you can find someone in Jerusalem that can do those two things, I'll pardon the city from my judgment. And of course, there are none. Verse number two, and though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. So there are people that give lip service to God, but they don't back it up with anything in their heart or life. Verse three, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have received a re uh, refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. So every effort God has made to bring these people around to him, to get them to repent, they've rejected it and they've hardened their hearts toward him. Verse four, therefore I said, surely these are poor, these they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of God. I will get me unto the great men, and I will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God, but these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them, and a wolf of the evening shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Every one that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces, because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings are increased. So as Jeremiah witnesses, the people continue to refuse the promptings of God to repent, uh, he sees that they don't. So in verse four, he calls them poor and foolish who don't know the way of the Lord or the judgment of God. So he says in verse five, I'm going to turn to the great men who've known the way of the Lord and see about them. And he says, but these have altogether broken the, the yoke and burst the bond. So one way of looking at it is saying, I'll get the end of the great men because the poor and foolish men have broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Others would interpret it and say, well, the great men didn't have it either. So let's read verse five again. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. 
but these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. To me, it's saying that the young and the poor and the foolish are the ones that uh, have broken the yoke, so forth. And what's going to happen because of it, verse 6, is the predators will come. A lion, a wolf, a leopard, the predators are going to come and make prey of Israel. Verse 7, how shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I have fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's houses. So there's a line outside the front of the harlot's houses. They were as fed horses in the morning Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. There's that poetry we're talking about. Uh, that's a little crass, but poetic nonetheless. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord, and, su- and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? He said, look, the children have no excuse. They've forsaken me. They've sworn on false gods. They've committed adultery. They've lined up in the a harlot's houses, they have uh, been fed and taken care of by me, and then in the afternoon they go after uh, and commit adultery. Verse 10, go ye up upon her walls and destroy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, for they are not the Lord's. For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have belied the Lord and said, it is not he, Neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see sword nor famine. And the prophets shall become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people would, and it shall devour them. Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. It is a mighty nation, it is an ancient nation, a nation whose language thou knowest not, neither understandest what they say. And so God's promising the judgment to come. He's promising the Babylonian captivity that's going to come to the people, an ancient nation, the Persians. They won't speak the same language. <clears throat> and he's trying to put them in fear that they're going to be taken from their home, taken from their uh, language, taken from their culture, and put into a place of wrath and judgment. Verse 17, nope, 16, their quiver is as an open sepulcher. They are all mighty men, and they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flocks and thine herds. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities, wherein thou trustest with the sword. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. And it shall come to pass, when ye shall say, Wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and which see not, which have ears and hear not. And so you've ignored me. You don't respond when I try to correct you. You don't answer me. And so you're going to feel the pain of having forsaken me. You forsake me, I forsake you. Verse 22, fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble? At my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it, and though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniqui- 
iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. Well, you take a verse like that, and even in the midst of this thing that's talking about judgment on Israel and Judah and, and the way they turn to pagan gods, and we can make those applications to ourselves as well. We're not necessarily putting up statues of Buddha and praying to them or or are a false god in that respect, but there is idolatry today. We tend to idolize possessions, and, and honestly, our, our primary god is our own self. But uh, when you see a verse like 25, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. And so what, what's it talking about? It's talking about verse 24. Uh, the Lord gives rain, former and latter. He hath reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So these good things, these blessings, the food that the invaders are going to eat that should have been for your children. Your iniquities have turned away those things. And then that phrase, your sins have withholden good things from you. <clears throat> that is indeed true for all of us. Sin withholds good things from us, and we shouldn't uh, partake in it for a number of reasons, including that one. For among my people, verse 26, are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that setteth snares, they set a trap, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, and visit means shall I not judge them or punish them for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? And so, a very general chapter talking about the coming judgment of the Lord upon the people, what they have forsaken him for, how that hasn't benefited them at all, uh, the comparisons, the poetic language. Here is just an appeal made to the people, uh, basically out of frustration. Why haven't you responded properly? Why haven't you turned back to the Lord for all his goodness to you? All right, that's all that we have for you today. Very simple, 12 minutes. Tomorrow morning, Christmas Day. I would be doing it live, but we never do Sundays live, and Christmas is on a Sunday this year. And so tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, chapter number 6 will have been recorded, and it'll upload at 8 o'clock, and you can catch it then and there. So thanks for watching. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. By way of recording, chapter number 6 at 8 a.m. God bless you. Have a wonderful Christmas Eve, and I hope you have a very merry, happy, and wonderful Christmas celebration tomorrow. Be sure to go to church if your church is having service, and if it's not, find one that is and go to the house of the Lord on his birthday. There won't be a Christmas day on a Sunday for 11 more years. Your life is going to change immensely between now and then. Your children may be grown and out of the house at that point. This is a wonderful opportunity to make a special memory this Christmas season. All right, I'll leave you alone with that. God bless you. Have a great evening.